the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning from St. Bartholomew's in Ottawa. This is our last Sunday of Advent, the fourth Sunday of Advent, and sometimes we call the candles by different names, and so our fourth candle would be love. Also, you can see behind me, our altar has been turned around. It's still not populated with the people we're expecting on New Year's, at Christmas Eve, but that will happen. And today, in our gospel reading, we turn to the story of Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist, and Mary, and their encounter. It's often called the visitation. And Archdeacon Pamela Yarrow has a lovely sermon to make us think about Elizabeth's place in the story, and I believe in our hearts too. Our collect for the fourth Sunday of Advent. Heavenly Father, who chose the Virgin Mary, full of grace, to be the mother of our Lord and Savior, now fill us with your grace, that we in all things may embrace your will and in her rejoice in your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Heavenly message brought by an angel coming to lift the hopes of the earth, bringing to Mary, humble and lowly, God's invitation to give the Christ birth. Mary, we hail you, full of God's favor, blessed are you, and blessed your Son. He will be called the child of the highest, Savior of all the Holy One. Mary replied to Gabriel's message, I am the servant made of the Lord. It be done just as you have spoken. My soul rejoices in God's saving word. Mary, we hail you, full of God's favor. Blessed are you, and blessed your Son. He will be called the Child of the highest, Savior of all the Holy One. In the beginning, when God had spoken, through God's own word all things came to be. Now by that word, Embodied through many, God's glory blazes that our eyes may see. Mary, we hail you, full of God's favor. Blessed are you, and blessed your Son. He will be called the child of the heart. Savior of all the Holy One. A reading from the prophet Micah. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from old, from ancient days. Therefore, he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. 
Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. If the Assyrians come into our land and tread upon our soil, we will raise against them seven shepherds and eight installed as rulers. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Show us the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Show us the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Hear, O Shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock, Shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim, in the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Show us the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angered despite the prayers of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors, and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts, Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Show us the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Show us the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. The Gospel of Christ. In my family, there are strong physical resemblances between members of the family, especially on my mother's side. So when I was growing up, people would always come up to me and say, Pamela, you look so much like your mother, which used to irritate me no end because I really could not see it until my old age. But similarly, my daughter and I look very much alike. So whenever I would go to my daughter's school for meet the teacher or whatever, Invariably, the teacher would come up to me and say, oh, you must be Alexandra's mother. I liked that. That was fine. I was, I was good with that. I'm happy to be known as the mother of Alexandra. And I wonder if that's probably the way Elizabeth felt. Today, we read this very short gospel passage in the first chapter of Luke, where we hear a little bit about the story of Elizabeth, whom we usually just refer to as the mother of John the Baptist kind of the beginning and the end of the story. And I suspect that Elizabeth was fine with that, to be known as the mother of John the Baptist. 
But I think the reading from Luke is significant, and I wanted to focus on these verses, especially today, because it gives us a fleeting glimpse of a woman who is, in addition to being the mother of John the Baptist, is also a discerning and inspiring person in her own right. So I wanted to focus on this passage because it bears witness to another person who was one of the first witnesses in the incarnation narrative. And Elizabeth's story complements the more well-known narratives of Mary, the mother of Jesus, and of John the Baptist. But it gives a, a unique perspective from her point of view. So at first glass, we have this very human, heartwarming, domestic scene between Mary and her cousin Elizabeth, described in these verses today. So this is Mary when she's fresh from her astonishing conversation with the angel Gabriel, where she learned about her role as the mother of the future Messiah and Savior. And by this point, Elizabeth is now six months pregnant with the son who will be named John. But we have to look at the verses preceding in the first chapter of Luke to get a little bit more of the context, a little bit more of the backstory, so that we can understand what's going on between this uh, ecstatic encounter with Mary and Elizabeth. So in the previous verses, we learned that, Mary that Elizabeth was a righteous woman, the daughter of a priestly family, who had lived a blameless life with her husband, Zechariah, also a priest, but it was a life that had been saddened by the fact of Elizabeth's barrenness. Until the angel Gabriel comes to explain to Zechariah, Elizabeth's husband, not Elizabeth, but to Zechariah, that miraculously, Elizabeth will become pregnant in middle age and give birth to a son whom they're instructed to call John. A son, Zechariah is told, a son who will play a pivotal prophetic role in preparing and identifying the coming of the Lord, <clears throat> the long-awaited Messiah for the people of Israel. Now, bear with me. I'm just going to skip a few verses forward in chapter 1 for a second <clears throat> to draw your attention to one of the last references that we have to Elizabeth. And it's interesting how Luke, the gospel writer, takes pains to tell us after John the Baptist is born at the circumcision ceremony in the temple eight days after his birth, the neighbors and the relatives all come up to Elizabeth and say, we're just confirming that the name of the baby is going to be Zechariah after his father, as was the custom. And Elizabeth says, no, no, no. We've been instructed by the angel Gabriel that his name will be John. Of course, the friends and neighbors ignore what Elizabeth says and immediately rush over to Zechariah only to have him confirm what his wife has said. And I think it's almost as though Luke wants to give as much prominence to Elizabeth in the beginning of this story, in the beginning of his gospel, because he knows that she will very quickly fade from the story. Now, you've probably heard it said that Jesus had a preferential option for the poor. I'm going to suggest to you that Luke had a preferential option for women because in his gospel, we see many more instances of women who play a very key, prominent role in the stories. And that's why I think it's important to focus on these six verses that Luke has given us today. Because in addition to telling us this wonderful, relatable story about two women in extraordinary circumstances, women who turn to each other just as we might go to a close family member or a friend to share some astonishing news, in addition to that, Luke also gives us the opportunity to witness a home visit that hints of the purposes of God for all of humanity. So these deceptively simple six verses offer much more than just an emotional encounter between two pregnant ladies, more than just a simple meeting of the moms, as the passage is sometimes dismissed by commentators. It's not just pregnancy hormones going on between Mary and Elizabeth. If we read carefully, we see that this intimate family scene also affords us a profound insight into God's plan of salvation and mercy and hope for the world. So in the verses that we read today, Luke goes out of his way to underline 
Elizabeth is filled with the Holy Spirit. And she exclaims with a loud cry, he tells us, to Mary, blessed is the fruit of your womb, and blessed are you who believe that there would be a fulfillment of what God had told her. So we see in these verses, Elizabeth is the first to affirm that Mary will become the mother of the Messiah. Elizabeth is the first to voice what the angel Gabriel had said, that the hand of God is at work in impossible ways in these very ordinary lives. And then Elizabeth responds with belief and trust and joy. Joy not only for herself, that she's finally bearing the son that she longed for, but joy also for the new life that is coming to the whole world in the son of Mary. Some of you probably know the writings of Henri Nouwen, who is a 20th century Catholic priest and theologian. And we now wrote a meditation on this short passage in Luke's gospel. And he said this, these two women, Elizabeth and Mary, created space for each other to wait. They affirmed for each other that something was happening that was worth waiting for. The visit of Elizabeth and Mary is one of the Bible's most beautiful expressions of what it means to form community, to be together, gathered around a promise affirming that something is really happening. To which I would add, in addition to forming community, these women, Elizabeth and Mary, exhibit discernment and wisdom that far exceeds their levels of education or their position in society. Mary and Elizabeth accept that God is present in their daily lives, but present in sometimes extraordinary, impossible ways. So long before Elizabeth's child, who grows up to be John the Baptist, long before the birth of either John the Baptist or Jesus, Elizabeth, not John, Elizabeth points to God. Elizabeth is one of the earliest persons in the birth stories of Jesus who has a sense of the holy, to rejoice that something really is happening. So she says in this passage, why does the mother of my Lord come to me? In her way, Elizabeth prepares the way of the Lord with her confession of faith and the clarity of her conviction. So in these six short verses, we have both a glimpse of this heartwarming home visit, but also an ineffable encounter with the future of God. So Elizabeth can rightly be known as both the mother of John the Baptist and an early evangelist in her own right, thanks to this brief snapshot that we get only in Luke's gospel today. Now we know that at the time of the birth of both John the Baptist and Jesus, the whole world barely noticed either of these women, Elizabeth or Mary. And similarly, in our current generation, there are many who, except for a few, a few jolly days in December, either don't notice, or are cynical about, or indifferent to, or outright reject the message of repentance spoken by John the Baptist and the message of redemption spoken by Jesus. Just as Elizabeth's friends and neighbors ignored the plain truth that she spoke because she was a woman. But we also don't listen the way Elizabeth did. Sometimes we don't listen to the inconvenient voices of old women, the elderly, the sick. We don't listen to the harsh voices of people struggling to survive on the fringes of our society. We don't hear the threatening voices of people who challenge our values and our world views. So like Elizabeth, we can stop and think for a minute. Do we react with belief and joy that God still acts in astonishing and inexplicable ways in our ordinary daily lives? Are we open to an occasional encounter or even a long-term relationship with the God whom Elizabeth recognizes immediately? Do we respond with trust or fear when God makes a home in our hearts or a home visit in our lives? Meditation from Arinawan continues. 
He says, our waiting for God in Advent is always shaped by alertness to the word. It is waiting in the knowledge that someone wants to address us. The question is, are we home? Are we at our address, ready to respond to the doorbell? We need to wait together to keep each other at home spiritually so that when the word comes, it can become flesh in us. Centuries ago, Mary rang Elizabeth's doorbell. Elizabeth was at home, physically and spiritually. She welcomed Mary, and she had the spiritual insight to realize that God's promises were being fulfilled for her child and for all of us who call ourselves children of God. Like Mary, Elizabeth was blessed among women as both a mother and an evangelist, and we are blessed by pondering her story. Thanks be to God. Amen. I ask your prayers for the Anglican Communion throughout the world. And in our diocese, we are praying for our diocesan staff, our Bishop Shane and all those who work there at 71 Bronson. I ask your prayers for the world, for peace and justice in the Middle East and all those places that are so troubled We also remember our own Canadian forces, members of the Governor General's Foot Guards, those in the diplomatic service, and NGOs. I ask your prayers for those on the front lines of our COVID response, and for our schools, students and teachers, administrators, and for long-term care facilities. Seeking the strength and comfort of Christ, let us offer our prayers. Living God, inspire our minds with a vision of your kingdom in this time and place, God of love. Touch our eyes that we may see your glory in all creation, God of love. Touch our ears that we may hear from every mouth the hunger for hope, and stories of refreshment, God of love. Touch our lips that we may proclaim with joy the wonderful works of God, God our love. Touch our hearts that we may discern the mission to which you call us, God of love. Touch our feet that we may take your good news into our neighborhoods, communities, and all the world, God of love. Touch our hands that we may each accomplish the work you have given us to do. God of love, strengthen and encourage all who minister in our name, especially during these challenging times. God of love, open the hearts and hands of many to support your church in this and every place. God of love, heal the broken, Restore the sick and suffering and raise up all who have fallen, especially all who have experienced loss of any kind in these pandemic days. In our parish community, we pray for Michael, Erica, Joanne, Francis, Don, Christina, Julie, Hannah and family, Harriet and family, Magdalene and family, Michael, Pat and Maggie. And we take a moment to remember all those known to us. God of love. Comfort those who mourn and remember those who have died. 
remembering especially all those who died in the tornadoes in the United States and in other natural disasters in our country too. And let light perpetual shine upon them. God of love. Gracious and holy God, thank you for the affirmation of the Blessed Virgin Mary, of Saint Elizabeth, and give us wisdom to perceive you, diligence to seek you, patience to wait for you, eyes to behold you, a heart to meditate upon you, and a life to proclaim you, the power of the Spirit of Jesus Christ our Lord. As Jesus taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Thank you for worshiping with us this morning at St. Bartholomew's on our last Sunday of Advent. As you can see behind me, the altar has been turned around. It is a stable. There aren't many uh, people there, a shepherd and some animals, but that will all change, of course, on Christmas Eve. And so we hope that you can join us either virtually for our service, just like you're watching now on Christmas Eve, we also hope you will be able to watch our virtual nativity play, our nativity pageant. And we will do this as we did last year with lots of our kids from different places, remotely acting out their scenes and then putting them all together for us all to watch. It was great fun last year. And so we're looking forward to it this year. In these times, things change very quickly. We are still uncertain as to whether we will have a Christmas Eve and a Christmas Day in person service in the church. 
we will let you know. If we do, there will be no singing and the numbers will be restricted. We'll have a pre-registration for that, but we'll let you know via email as soon as it's clear. Thank you. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you and all those whom you love now and always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.